time to retire the term unconventional when referring to tools that were used during the crisis. We know that tools like these are likely to be needed in some future form in future ELB spells, which we hope will be rare. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the show. Listen, I'm glad you guys tuned in. Welcome. Glad to have you here. Now, we're going to talk about the Fed. Up until uh, just a few months ago, actually up until now, you couldn't be sure which direction the Fed was going to turn. And this has everything to do with which direction that this crisis is going to take, whether it's going to be deflationary, like ec economists like Harry Dent have been saying for years, or inflationary. Now, going back in my show, back to the original when I started, I always thought it was going to be inflationary. And the reason why is, is I just cannot, for the life of me, picture the Federal Reserve and the world central banks sitting idly by while the banks collapse and everything else starts to collapse. And in fact, they're not. They're not sitting idly by. Fed policy has everything to do with what happens with the economy. Uh, let's uh, get the charts started. Uh, let's open the charts uh, right here and let's take a look at what's going on. You know, the stock market's up 512 points today. And, you know, it has everything to do with, with the Fed. The Fed has decided that they're going to go ahead and they're going to bail the banking system out. What it, basically, whatever it takes. And they're going to... They're going to use their monetary policy as an effective tool whenever they think they have to and whenever they think they need it. This is the basic thing. And they're going to start slashing interest rates. Okay? What they're doing is, is along with these trade embargoes and trade tariffs that they got in place, they're going to slowly start destroying the dollar now. We're not going to see an immediate hyperinflation. That's not how hyperinflation works. Like today, there's no hyperinflation, and tomorrow there's hyperinflation. That's not how it works. How hyperinflation works is over a period of months, you start to see your purchasing power of your dollars diminish. Everything starts to cost them more. And what happens is, as those months progress like toward a year, two years, as it moves out, it gets faster and faster. And the end part of it, the end part of it, the very final stage, that goes quickly. The purchasing power then goes very quickly toward the end. But it's, it's a gradual development toward hyperinflation. It starts with inflation. And the inflation slowly heats up hotter and hotter and hotter as they add fuel to the fire. Because it's a hyperinflationary depression, you have banks failing, nobody has any money, but at the same time, money's being injected into the system, but it's never injected evenly across the board. So when I say nobody has any money, one class of people don't have any money, and another class of people are, are being flooded with money from the government. And so what we have is we have a system that's unbalanced. It's unbalanced. And this all has to do with the Fed. Uh, let's take a look at what the Fed's saying right now. The Fed's saying that they're going to cut interest rates. St. Louis Fed President James Bullard issued the opening salvo in the Fed's capitulation to the market. You hear that? Capitulation. That means they're going to do whatever it takes for the market. They're going to support this market no matter what. Opening salvo of the Fed's capitulation to the market on Monday, saying that an interest rate cut may be warranted soon. So there, there we have it. They're capitulating. The Fed is capitulating. They're going to do whatever it takes. So at this point, the mold is being set, and we had to wait till now. Up until this point, going back when I started my channel for months and months and months, I've been talking about hyperinflation coming, hyperinflation coming, but I didn't have proof 
of which way the Fed was going to turn on this. I mean, there was a small chance that the Fed would just stand back and let the banks fail. Stand back and, and, and allow the market to roll over and not do anything. But, to my shock and to my surprise, what I never expected was, I expected that the markets were going to roll over and that they, when they got down really low, the Fed was going to step in. That's what I thought originally. I never really understood that the Fed wasn't going to wait until the market rolled over. They were going to step in the first little sneeze the market had. They would declare flu and they would step in and change monetary policy. I never expected them to yield this quickly and this easily to give in. I mean the markets didn't even get the chance to roll over. They're still near all-time highs and what are they talking about? They're talking about Fed rate hike cuts. Okay, let's see what else we got here. Uh, why Trump's trade chaos may force the Fed to cut rates. Now they're using the, the trade chaos as an excuse to cut rates. But what's really happening is the economy is not this super fabulous economy that they all talk about. They know that the economy is starting to roll over and that we're heading toward a recession. They know this. So what they're doing is they're front running it. They're getting in there and they're trying to stop it from happening before it happens. This is basically what they're doing right now at this point. And so what's happening is, is the system is ready to roll over. The markets right now are ready to roll over. There's an approaching recession. But we see a 500 point gain in the market today. Talk is now starting to turn to action from the Fed. And that means that they've chosen their direction. So what we're going to see from all this, we're not going to see instantaneous hyperinflation. That's not what we're going to see. What we're going to see is first the trade hikes on Chinese goods. It's going to raise the price of all Chinese goods. Roughly 25 if they, percent. If they pass more on to the consumer, it could be 35 percent. If they pass another 10 percent on to the consumer, you know, of, the, of their costs. All Mexican goods coming into the country. Mexico now is talking that, that there's going to be more migrants coming through the border than before. They say because this is going to affect their economy. And so they're going to have more migrants coming in. Well, you know, Trump's just going to keep raising those rates on the Mexicans until he's up to 25%, just like the Chinese. And so we're going to see a tariff on all Chinese goods, uh, Chinese goods, and we're going to see a tariff on all Mexican goods. So we're going to see all those goods raise in price. Now, domestically made products will probably rise in price, too. We've got tremendous amount of flooding in farmers' fields and stuff. You can talk about grain prices going up as well. Over in the Asian countries, we've got some sort of an illness that's affecting the pigs that's very much like Ebola, but it's a pig version of Ebola. Ebola. It's very catchy. Once it gets in a pig farm, it just basically kills every pig. They all die. And we're talking massive amounts of, of loss, loss on a massive scale of pork. Pork is one of the big staples of food production for the world. Pigs and chickens, basically. Pigs, chickens, and beef are th the three big meat productions for the entire world. You take one third of that away, pork, you know, and it's going to put a strain on the other two. Massive cuts in, in food production coming up. When 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 this when this season ends, they're not they haven't got a real good growing season. I know here in Canada, honest to gosh, guys, I'm telling you, uh, I have never seen such a wet 
rainy spring in all my life. The ground has been soaked. Every day it pours all day long. I haven't been able to get out to do my projects because of this weather. Today was the first nice day we've had where I was able to get out and do a little bit of painting. You know? And I really enjoyed it, being able to get outside. But the bugs were really bad, you know. <laughs> uh, we have a bug up here. It's called a black fly. And it'll crawl in your hair, you know, and it'll bite you. It'll actually chew on you. It'll actually, if you give it enough time, a black fly will actually cut a piece. It's like they get a little steak knife, and they're up there, and they're chopping a little piece out of you. And it'll swell up into a big bump. You know, they're an awful insect. They're right up there with ticks and mosquitoes. Honest to gosh, it's been a bad spring. I think that the there's something wrong with the sun or something. You know, I'm not exactly sure what's causing this, but it's widespread, and we're not really having much of a spring anywhere. We're getting the big rains, and it's flooding the farmers' fields. They can't get their crops in the ground. You know? This is breeding ground for famine. I mean, you know, but I mean, here we are in the Western world. We have so many different types of agriculture that one type of agriculture can kind of step in a little bit for a different kind of agriculture. So if one crop goes bad, they got a different crop that they can use or whatever, and they can distribute it around a little bit. So it might not get famine, but you'll see food prices go way the heck up because pork's going to be affected and your, your grains are going to be affected. And when you see all these other food prices going up, and along with the prices of everything else going up at the same time because of trade embargoes and everything else, and heaven bid war break out, because if war breaks out anywhere in around Iran, we're going to see oil prices double. What I'm basically saying to, saying to you is these are the first stages of the inflation. Plus, we got the Fed changing monetary policy, which is going to be inflative as well. This is the kind of atmosphere you need that makes gold and silver take off. You know? And at a certain point, will they actually be able to suppress the kind of the prices of gold and silver? Once we start to get more than just moderate, moderate inflation. When we start to get really absorbent inflation, and people start to notice that their purchasing power is being diminished incredibly fast. They're going to look to an alternative to the dollar. There's not much out there, guys, as alternatives to the dollar in this day and age. So this is big news, what we got happening right now with the Fed actually coming in and cutting interest rates, along with the yield curve inversion. I think they're frightened right now. This is why they're taking these preemptive steps. They're positioning themselves. Now let's talk about Deutsche Bank just a little bit. Uh, let's let's talk about what's what's going on with Deutsche Bank. You know, this has everything to do with what the Fed chairman said today. Look at Deutsche Bank. They're up 4.45 percent today. Nobody out there, nobody is going to buy that. Everybody thought Deutsche Bank's going to sink, sink under the waves. Nobody would buy these Deutsche Bank. And just, I set the price at six euros. As soon as it went under six euros, all of a sudden the price shoots up. Is anybody a little bit suspicious about why Deutsche Bank has taken off a little bit in price and went up 4.45%? Is anybody besides me a little bit suspicious? That this isn't some some sort of a, a a bailout operation where they basically go in and buy Deutsche Bank stock, uh, like not really, so that we could ever find out that they bought it. They probably use. I mean, these guys are are super crooks, you know. These these guys that are running our financial industry right now are basically a gang, you know, and and. They would never come in and make it so that you could actually see that they're actually buying the money. They would use some sort of a proxy or something, you know, to filter money into this. But this thing was going to roll over and die. And what's happened is, is today it's went up 4.45%.
and I mean I am just, is it just me, or are you guys too very suspicious about what money just came into Deutsche Bank and where and from who? Well, you know, you probably should be suspicious. If more people were suspicious, then the crooks and criminals out there wouldn't get away with as much as they do. But you know what the problem is? It's, it's got everything to do with a little invention that we have right now called a cell phone. Everybody's got one. And they get games and everything on it. They got Facebook on it. They got all this kind of stuff on it. And everybody's always got their face in that cell phone, paying so much attention to that cell phone, paying, paying so much attention to their laptop, that they're not paying attention to what these crooks are doing. So these crooks have been getting away with an awful lot in the past few years. And basically what's happened is the system has totally went corrupt ever since the cell phone came along. The system's gone total corruption now at this point. And, you know, they're going to keep pumping this system full of money to keep it going, even though it's like a colander. It's like a sieve. It's, it's, like, a, it's like a big bowl full of holes. You pour water in, the water runs out as quick as you pull it in. Picture the water as money. They're just going to keep pumping this thing, you know, and, and uh, pumping it full of money. And they can create as much money as there are leaves of trees on the trees outside of your house. But they can't print gold, real gold. They can't print real silver. They can't even print bitcoins. But what they can print, they will print. And when they do that, they're going to very slowly erode at the value of these currencies. Until in the end, nobody's going to trust fiat currencies anymore. It's because the system is so corrupt. You know, I've been preaching this a long time. But we're getting ready to start to go into the into the inflation now the serious inflation it's gonna start hitting in the next few months it's gonna pick up steam and at a certain point now I cannot tell you exactly what the point is because it's off in the future at a certain point off in the future and it's not real far away it might be three four five six months away they will have eroded the value of the dollar to a certain point where the people start to react to it and they start to say, hey, you know what? I can't, I'm not saving my money anymore because six months ago my money buy twice as much as it buys now. I'm taking my money out of the bank and I'm going to go out and buy something with it right now because six months from now it'll be twice as much as it is now and, and, and it's, it's going to preserve my purchasing power better than leaving it in the bank. And when that starts to happen, that's when we're going to see the hyperinflation come much faster at that point and they're going to get us to that point pretty soon I at this point from what I've seen them do today with Deutsche Bank honest to goodness pushing that up 4.45 percent uh, I'm starting to think this is how they're going to bail it out they're just going to let it go down to six and they're going to prop it up back up to 6.25 and when it goes back down to six they'll prop it back up to 6.25 and they can do that indefinitely how many months could they do that? And just, just barely keep this bank afloat. That's an awful lot cheaper option for them. Plus, they keep the, the they keep the bank itself on pins and needles. You know, those guys at the bank. You know, they feel like they're walking on eggshells. You know, they feel like they could go under at any moment, and so they continue with cost-cutting measures and everything else, right? And it's the cheapest way for the government to keep them going. It's just let them drop down to about 5.8, 5.9, and then bring them back up to 6.24. Just keep doing that over and over and over again into the future. That's the cheapest way to do it. Because what if they gave the German bank a big lump of money right now? Well, three months from now, they'd have it all spent. They'd have their luxury vacations and everything else. By doing it this way... They're just, they're just trickle-feeding them along, you know, just, just giving them just enough nourishment to keep them going. It's the cheapest way of doing it. I don't know who thought of this, but if, that, if that's what's happening, I'm not sure. Maybe that's not it. Maybe there's some crazy investor out there who thought that Deutsche Bank was a really good, par really good bargain at these prices. We'll have to wait and see.
you know. I might be assuming that that's what they're doing, but perhaps not, you know. I mean, this this little bounce up in price might just evaporate in the next few days, and Deutsche Bank might fail anyway, you know. And, and see what they've done? Can you see what they've done? They've got all of us on eggs, walking on eggshells, too. Because of the criminality within the system. Listen, thank you guys for listening. Like and subscribe, and we'll catch you guys in the next show. Bye-bye.